AJ, the CEO here. Hope you are all doing well. Oh, it, it, it has been an interesting, very interesting week. Um, I don't know if you well, you probably did not notice this, but we we got a lot of stuff that we gotta play catch up on. Um, I do not like the fact that I am behind on some stuff, but let me just take a quick second to show you everything that we got going on. First, we got a bunch of products that we have to review. We got a new, from Ori, a four-unit um, kind of um, multi digital wall type of setup there. Um, that's the box that they sent me, so I got to get one more monitor to test that out. And in the white box... We have a new video switcher that marries a um, HDMI and SDI coming in from um, AVCANS. Um, also, right below that, we have the OBS Bot Tail Air. Actually, I had this a while ago, but I had some um, issues back and forth with the firmware. I finally got that taken care of, so we're going to actually 
um, redo all of the review. Um, again, it's been out there, so we'll be able to, I'm not going to go into a lot of the other stuff. You know how we're going to do. We're going to review it from a ministry standpoint, how it can actually be used. And what else do we got? If I can get my hand over here to get this other camera. Um, the other thing that we got, and that's the wrong camera I'm looking at. This is the camera I need to look at. Right here, right above my head, is the PTZ Optics 4X, I'm 4X, 4K 20X PTZ. Um, this does have AI tracking on it as well. The one that you're um, using right now is the 1080p version, but this camera is going to be one that goes into TCF ministry. Um, we got a bunch of other stuff going on with them. Excuse my mess. We got their second um, subwoofer right there behind me because um, the first, I can only fit one in my car at a time. <laughs> That's actually going to be installed. Probably going to start doing that stuff um, next week. We also have some more cameras. I have another um, version of that same camera that's going to go in the back, and then we're going to order two more that are going to go flank either side of the sanctuary. So that's coming up. Um, a lot of stuff that we got, and I got a bunch of follow-up stuff we got to do. But before I start blabbing, know that if you have any questions, folks, you can email me at questions at ajhomes.com. Give me 48 to 72 hours to respond. Um, and if you are not a part of the Facebook group, I don't know what you're missing. I mean, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Go to Facebook, look up Modern Media Ministry Made Easy. Join the over 3,200 media ministries from all around the world where we're just trying to help each other in skills. I don't have access to every piece of equipment, folks, but there's somebody there in the world that's probably in that group that uses it. That group is not meant for sharing your live stream, none of that stuff. You'll get kicked out. It's mainly a group um, a support group to help each other. And typically we would have a round table this Sunday. We're not going to have one, obviously, for Easter. Um, so we'll relax on that. Y'all enjoy um, whatever y'all got going on Sunday um, afternoon. Um, also, if you need any, back to that email, if you send me more than three emails, folks, go ahead and just book a consultation. That's the easiest way to have dedicated time for me to answer your questions. You can go to ajhomes.com slash consultations. And we would do the best that we possibly can to get your stuff answered. Um, you can do phone, uh, Zoom, on-site, all that other good stuff. My calendar is open um, now. To, I mean, my vacation that I did not take at all um, is a bit about ready to be up. So um, we're, we're back. Well, not that we're back. We're doing the same thing. It's available to book stuff is back, yeah. Also, don't forget, folks, we are a hop, skip, and a jump away from 62,000 subscribers. Um, once we hit 70,000, we're doing a giveaway every 10,000 all the way up to 250,000 subscribers. Um, if you haven't, there's a link down below that I'm giving away $2,000 in live streaming bundle. That is an ATEM, a joystick, PTZ, um, POE switch, all of the fun stuff. Link is down below. And if not, you can go to this link here, bit.ly and all that other fun stuff. Easier to just go in the description and click that link. You only got to enter once, folks. Um, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and holler at some folks. Making sure I change my stuff right so I can actually call up everybody. Let's go ahead and holler at some folks. Anthony, hey, good morning. Mike, hello, hello. Elkin, hello, Amy. Good morning, Monty. What's going on, Monty? We got we got to partner up and do something um, on one of these one day. We need to do a a joint live stream or something to answer some questions or something like that. We need to we need to catch up, man. Um, Antonio, what is going on, Darren? Hello, hello, Keith. Good morning, Fetch. Good day, David. Hello, hello. Renee, hey, hello. Jane Witt, hello, hello. Parker, hello. G. Albert, good morning. Abe K. Empire, hello, hello. Tamara Brown, hello, hello. Um, did you finish that install yet? Um, let me know. I want to know how that's going with you. Um, Duva. Hello, hello, Reverend Leroy, how are you doing? Naomi, good morning, ma'am. Um, Lanny, 
Hello, hello. I'm making sure my audio is right. All right. Everything's going here. I got an eyeball when I don't see something for a while uh, there. Um, uh, Mr. Rob, hello, hello. Darius, good morning. Richard from New York, hello, hello. Dr. JMM, hello. Rhonda, hello. Um, and... Balazier, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Hello, hello. Matthew with the X. Hey. Um, Steven from New Jersey. What's going on? Willie, hello. Um, one Eye CCTV security camera. Hello. Brother Art, Streets of Destiny. Hello. Um, Norm. Hello, hello. All righty, folks. So um, just know if you got any questions, please start it with the queue. That way it makes it easier for me to know what is going on and see your question. Um, also, I dropped a whole bunch of videos because I didn't realize I'd never switched them back to public. Um, and I just got permission for some of the other stuff that we just did. So um, I completed phase one at um, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. I need to update that because it's actually Missionary Baptist Church. I was right the first time. But um, I finished their day two and three because their phases changed and we're rolling with doing everything. So um, I didn't finish everything I originally quoted in doing this because it changed because we're going to be back. Also, we had um, a little entrepreneur day um, I got permission from the parents, and this is an interview of all the kids there that they had a fresh market. My my baby girl was there. I was very um, proud of that. Let me jump over to her. That is the parent who organized everything, and I got my stuff on mute. I don't know if you'll hear it or not. Look at that. Look at that pretty girl right there. So, can you, can you tell everybody a little bit about what this oh, is? Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, we got that dropped. Um, also, I was invited to um, talk at Career Day at the school yesterday. So, everybody was excited about um, being a YouTuber and a business owner. So, that was, that was fun. Um, so, we got all those videos dropping. I got a bunch of other stuff. I am really behind. And um, I'm kind of hesitant about saying this because I'm really at a point where I need to. I'm going to start looking for a video editor because I, I got way too much stuff in my lap and trying to catch up. Um, we got a bunch of other projects coming on. We got about seven in the pipe that I got to do. Um, so I'll probably be posting some stuff like that formally on my website and on my um, Facebook page. Um, so if you are a budding video editor, you make sure you got a fast internet <laughs> to download all the stuff that I got. But um, that's what we got. Let's go through it one more time. Give some more time to pop some questions up here. Joseph, hello. Ray B from Indiana, hello, hello. Harry, hello, hello. Uh, Brian Jones, hello, sir. Um, and I think. That's it. All right. So let's go ahead and start firing away at some questions, folks. And if you haven't, please go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you haven't, because that's the only way you can leave comments on these type of live streams. And hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos. All righty, folks. Um, let's see. Scanning through here. For some questions here. Page two. Page two. All right, here we go. Reverend Leroy. Um, can the Stream Decks work with the A10 Mini Pro? The Stream Decks. If you're talking about... Um, if you are talking about this thing right here, yes, you need to use the companion app to do that. Um, I would ask Mike about that. I personally have not done it. I did it a while ago. I have not done it recently. Um, but yes, it can because Blackmagic gives access to the um, software development kit or the SDK. So you could, their third parties can write stuff to interact with it. So that is possible. Um, 
Let me hope. AJ, I use OBS for my church live stream, but last week I lost my video signal. I use a video switcher, and I am seeing both cameras, but it is not showing up in OBS when I power everything on. All right, so um, I'm going to try and answer this, but I kind of want to get some more details. Are you using Windows or uh, Mac? Um, if it's Windows, I've seen this issue happen before, and this is one thing I always do with the computers that I build as well, too. If we come over here, you can hit the Windows key and the letter X to open up the second menu, menu and go to Device Manager. And what we need to do first is make sure that under the um, Universal Serial Bus Controllers, make sure everything in here that has it, this one doesn't, but normally the hubs have it. Go in here to Power Management and make sure this is um, not checked because Windows will shut down USB stuff and only turn it on when it feels that you need it. Um, that is not good if you're using um, a, a video mixer that needs to always be on. That's the first thing I would check because if you're seeing everything from your video switcher but you're not seeing it in OBS, that means either that's happened and gone to sleep or the other question I would ask, does it stay permanently connected or are you disconnecting the USB and plugging it back in. Because if you do, when you connect your video switcher to a different USB connection from week to week, it shows up like it's a different switcher. Um, you always have to keep it in the exact same jack. Um, mine, I never unplug, but that, those are the first two things I would say check out. Um, a K Empire, or is that A flat? Um, <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, um, as a church media team leader, how do you motivate your members given that the church itself has very low knowledge about the importance of church media? Um, I would say, and I can say this now because, I mean, I've said this before. This was kind of the same mindset originally when I got started at um, Antioch. Um, they had media, but I can safely say the vision of what media could be <clears throat> they didn't have a grasp on it because it was foreign to them. Um, and I'm beating myself up when I'm getting ready to say this. Um, if you ever pop in on the round tables, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it was talking about how do you motivate your members? First off, you have to keep yourself motivated first. Um, you have to make sure you, and again, I can only talk for me. It was very disheartening originally when I was at Antioch, and I ain't throwing nobody under the bus. They can get mad. It's just a fact. When I was trying to do this, because no one else has done it, everybody else was pretty much was saying like I was crazy uh, because there was no example of anything. It's just like the same way when you're the, like, I'm the first person of anybody that I knew that had a Tesla. So a lot of times when you, you hear it from secondhand information. Everybody's like, oh, the Teslas, they don't go but this much. They don't do this, this, this. You're just grasping for straws from what people say. And then when you actually show them, now all of those preconceived notions go away. How do I say that? When I was trying to do what I was doing for media, there was no one in the Verona area that we had access to that was doing what we were doing. So I had to just believe where it could go. And I couldn't get anybody motivated until I got myself motivated. And then, you know, even though the, the, you heard the statement, I'll believe it when I see it, you know that's not true. It's I'll, I'll, when I see it, that's when you, you know, it's the opposite. It's like when you see it, I'll believe it when I see it. It's like when you see it, that's when it happens, you know. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, mess, I'm, messing, I'm messing up the whole statement. But the whole thing is you have to show people through your actions and your belief first, because sometimes people won't believe what you see. I had a vision of a lot of what I wanted to do, and it was in my head. No one could believe it until they actually physically saw it, and that's what you have to do. And once you start seeing that, and when I've, I've had it way too many times where I finally get the stuff put in place, like even with church installs, I'll install the stuff. There's a lot of people that are in churches that agree to the payment for getting this stuff installed, but they really don't want it at all. But then I've seen so many people's attitude turn when they actually see the TVs, the scripture, the cameras, the live streaming, the people online. When they actually see that, that's when they get it. 
So how do you get people motivated? Motivate yourself. Remember um, the target, the goal that you have to accomplish that. And then people will join in. And let me give a harsh reality um, in truth. Even if they don't, who cares? I know that sounds messed up. I didn't like it either. But as I've gone down this road, don't waste your time waiting for other people to jump on board because um, you will end up missing out on a whole lot of stuff if you do that. Sorry, I'm just getting all these people sending me. Anyway, I keep my phone on vibrate. I hope I answered that question. I, I blabbed for a minute. The idea is become knowledgeable yourself, find a goal of what you want to do, have a target, a mission to accomplish that, and then show people that you're passionate about that. The right people will come along and join you on that journey. The people who don't, don't waste your time with them because they'll just drag you down. And then as you go into it, now if I go back to Antioch now, everybody is like excited and, you know, a lot of them have asked me to try and come back and help with the stuff because now they're seeing the importance of it. So, you know, you won't see it immediately, but it will come over time. Hope that answer, that was a drawn out <laughs> question, um, answer, but I hope that helps. Um, let me see, page three. Um, Duvav wants to know, um, appreciate your help. You're welcome. Could you please give me any suggestions on a portable live stream and equipment for the church? Well, that's kind of what I am building out um, myself. So let me actually, if I was doing this, I'm going to go here to Amazon and just put everything together and show you kind of, uh, I hate when it does this. I'm doing a, um, incognito so that it doesn't pull up any of my stuff. All right. So first off, this is what I've done myself um, for power for a portable system because I'm tired of bringing extension cables and there's not enough power. I am using the C1000, if I can spell it right. I thought I hit one. I first have this for my power. This gives me more than enough power no matter where I'm at. You always could get solar panels or honestly just charge it um, before you go somewhere, or even maybe this one, the C800, you know, either one. Um, but I would say that for power, or you always could do extension cables, but when you say portable, I'm talking about everything is dependent on myself. Um, I'm not going to talk about the AV can switcher yet because I haven't put my hands on it yet, but I would say the OC Go. As the video switcher, this is the one I actually took with me to the school yesterday to let the kids see because that's going to give you everything and the recording built in and your multi-view and your program. Even though the A2 Mini Pro could work, it doesn't give you the multi-view and the output at the same time. Um, I have a portable router. Mine is upstairs. Um, this, this is actually the one that I have but I would probably get maybe this one here. And then I would get a small um, gigabit switch. Doesn't have to be super expensive. Maybe this one, depends on how many ports that you need, if you wanna plug everything in. Um, and it all depends on your cameras. Um, in a portable situation, I would honestly stick with a camcorder. Um, I would get a 4K one because there's no point in getting a 1080p 4K camera. Please avoid these like the plague. These are all trash cameras. Do not get them um, at all. Um, and as you can see, this one, I'm, uh, no, nah, I don't trust that. I'd rather trust an actual name brand one, a Sony, a Panasonic, or something like that. Um, I mean, I would, at this price, you could get a PTZ camera. But I'm just kind of, I'm just thinking of portability um, here. So I would throw this in. This is actually the same um, camcorder I used to have. I think I donated that one to Josh um, out there. Um, that is the tail air that we're going to be reviewing again um, there. So we got that. You know, you can get your tripod, I mean, your tripod and all this other stuff and your cables. That's not a big thing. This um, travel router also will allow you to plug in 
to a connection if you have one, or you can hook up your phone. And I've used that when I've streamed with games before where I had to use my phone as a physical connection for a router. Um, you could do that. Um, and then a portable monitor. That is what I'm using right here in front of me. Something like that. Actually, this is the one that I have. Um, and then this is powered off a of USB, so you can plug this directly into the Anchor. Um, and this would be my portable setup, to be quite honest. Um, outside of cables and everything like that, that is the whole thing. Now, again, you could drop the price if you change this or if you already had an existing camera, but this is the setup I would do. I mean, you could drop the Anchor as well, too, and you're going to be sub. So if I remove that and I remove that, I mean, just this basic setup, you're, you're at $500 outside of cables. That is what I would put together in that type of system. And when I finish doing the whole portable system, because we're going to be doing a graduation, I'm going to go through everything that I use with that as well, too. Um, we're going to try and maybe add some solar panels as well, too, um, to that same situation. But um, do I hope that helps you, because that's what exactly what I use for a portable system. Um, Lanny. How do, you, um, how do you suggest controlling two computers at the same time, i.e. one presentation computer and one recording live streaming? Well, I'm actually doing that right now. So I use um, um, Mouse Without Borders. This is an app um, that Microsoft has, and <clears throat> this is what I have when I have, and I mean, I'm using this right now, if you um, watch on here. So... Uh, Mouse Without Borders, it is a software KVM, so you can actually control multiple computers at the same time. So if I cut over to this camera right here, so and if I zoom out some, you see my setup. This is the computer that I'm obviously connecting to right now, my three screens here. Then I have the multi-view over there. Then I have my streaming PC over here, and you can't see it, and I know it's not going to get low enough. I have another owncast system that hasn't been on in like six months <laughs> right there they're all set up but i only have one keyboard and mouse but i can move my keyboard and mouse all the way over and as you can see right there in the middle of vmix that is the mouse that i'm controlling so i can control everything using that from this setup so typically when i'm at a church where it's just me and we have multiple systems, this is how I do it. And I mean, this is how I do this as well, too. I'm controlling the vMix system here with that same um, software KVM for me to get over there. Um, I don't know if this download will actually work on the Mac. I don't believe so, but I mean, that is what I use. And even when I am using everything by myself, I do not do everything because I can't I'm only one person but it gives me access instead of me running back and forth I can get over to the stream I can get over to the presentation stuff and that's has really saved me so I put a link in the description for that hope that helps um let's see doctor if man it has been look it has been a rough year <laughs> it's gonna say that we're ending up March and man <sighs> I think I put a link in the description for this. Where can I get the ATEM software control for the ATEM Mini ISO? That is all located on Blackmagic's website. If you go to, I think I put the link in there, but if you go to blackmagicdesign.com slash support, you come here, click on the ATEM television um, uh, live production switchers and the latest version is right there. That's where you get all the software for that. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Matthew with the X. Hi, AJ. Is it possible to send two outputs, one for the program and preview, and another for the program? From what? What? What are you? What piece of equipment are you using or software? Because that's going to be dependent on that. Rob, yes, it does. It's actually down the street from me. 
I've eaten there a few times. Um, but Matthew, let me know what hardware you are, and we'll come back to your question. <coughs> Morning, AJ. I'm using the OC Go Stream. My question is, I is I am ha I have to Facebook and YouTube pulled up when I press the Go Live on the OC Go and press Go on Live. I'm hold on. I I, I think I misinterpreted what you're saying. I have to is I am have to have Facebook. Do I have to have Facebook and YouTube pulled up when I press the go live on the OC and press go on live on them? Yes and no. It all depends. On Facebook and YouTube, you can have a setting on there to say that immediately when it gets its encoder reading, it just goes live. That's what I have on here. When I press go on on air on my ATEM I mean, on my web presenter or anything here, my YouTube right now automatically just picks it up and just goes. I have that setting to say automatically start and automatically end when the encoder is over. That's the same setting that's inside of Facebook. If you schedule your stuff and check that box off, then no, you don't need to go to either one of those and hit go. Once you hit go on the OC Go stream deck, it will just go. That's kind of like what I do. And that's a setting under both. All right, Elkin has two questions. Um, I have a laptop running a fiber optic HDMI cable to my Blackmagic mini micro converter 12G to a SuperBat 12G SDI cable running several feet to another Blackmagic mini converter 12G. Okay. To the fiber optic HDMI cable into a flat screen TV. Do I simply run a SuperBat 12 gigabyte SDI cable from the SDI out of the micro converter to the SDI in on the third Blackmagic mini converter? Yes. That's all you got to do. That's really it. I haven't messed with the 12G. Um, for those that don't know, the 12G is one that's capable of 4K. The 3Gs are the ones that I use that are good for 1080p. Um, and the RG6 that I use, to my knowledge, that existing cable does not work with 12G, um, but that's what that is. So, yes, that's technically all you got to do to get that to work. Uh, oh, and then here's a third part of that question. Uh, feeding a fiber optic uh, show. Feeding a fiber optic HDMI cable into another TV to show the same content simultaneously. What is the rule on HDMI and SDI length for media? SDI cable, um, regular HDMI cable can only go 20 feet. Um, you get the amplified ones, they may go up to like 150, but those cables are very, very thick. If you go with a fiber optic HDMI cable, they can go up to 300 feet. Um, SDI typically is up to 300 feet as well, too. Um, so hopefully that answers your question question all right there we go Matthew was saying um to send two outputs one for the program and preview and another for the program from the ATEM Mini Pro no you cannot the only workaround with that is to have the HDMI out on the ATEM Mini Pro be your preview your multi-view that'll be for you and then the USB out is always going to send the program. You need to send that to something else like um, OBS or something like that, and that would give you the program. That's the only way you can get both of those at the same time with the, mm, excuse me, with the A10 Mini Pro. All right. I had to get my half and half um, sweet tea and lemonade there. <laughs> um. Reverend Leroy wants to know what brand of headphones, what brand of headphones are they? Are you talking about these? These are the Rode um, Nth100s. I've had these for a while. Um, it's just the in-ears were just bothering me. Um, so that's why I just use these. Um, these are the Rode Nth100s. Um, and they go for about $150. Very, very good ones. Just be mindful. I had some kids come over here one day 
and they were looking at these. And this part is very, um, it's not childproof. <laughs> if you get somebody that grabs this from here, th if you put too much pressure on this part right here, this will break. And two of them have broken. Um, but again, it was because I had somebody just was yanking these off, stuff like that. So these are meant for, like, if you're not delicate with them, and I'm not talking about being, oh, my God, being so dainty with them. You just can't toss these things around. But they're very good, um, and they're very comfortable as well, too. Um, back to G. Albert, my computer music room is torn up again. Good thing is that I connected my keyboard and iPad to the speakers and amplifier that I bought <laughs> in the 60S. Man. Sweet. Um, all right, I answered that. Rob wants to know, how reliable is the Starling? Thinking of, uh, about deploying it in a location for a set of apartments. It is very, 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 very reliable with download. Upload, they're working on that. Um, not that many people are pushing it like that. I mean, but it's working um, great, and it is significantly better from that. Now, for an apartment, for download speed, it would be great. If you were doing this for an apartment complex or something like that, and you got a lot of people that want to live stream and do all of that stuff at the same time, uh, I don't know about that. Um, but like with my mom, it has been very reliable with her. Um, so I'm actually bringing up both of them right now. So this is Galilee, and you can see it's only had three outages the entire time. And well, that was just um, high latency. And then the red was disconnected. I'm trying to get it. It's so small. It was disconnected for about a minute and a half at around like 4.10 a.m. But the rest of it, it has been very stable. Last time it did a speed test was on the 6th, 26th, and it's 334 down, 33 up. If I look at my mom's, she's in Lynchburg. She's getting... And that was actually today. She'd get 100 down and 13 up. So, again, it all depends on the location. That was 5 a.m. Let me run a test again and see what my mom's is. Hers has been very reliable. She had Comcast, and Comcast was just trash where she was at. Um, now, again, my mom is using Gen 1, the Gen 1 Starlink dish. The other one is Gen 3 at Ga um, Galilee Missionary. So it may be possible, might need to go back in and readjust it, but I haven't, um, I went back and just changed out a camera there, so I would need to have more time to go down there. But it has been very reliable. Like with my mom's stuff, it has not gone down in any way, shape, or form for quite a while. Um, a little high on the latency stuff, nothing that my mom would notice. And um, the average person, no. Um, I think it's been... Very, very good, especially if you're already paying. If somebody's already paying like $120 a month for terrible internet, this is a good option for them, um, to be quite honest. All right, one other thing, folks. I'm catching up to y'all's comments, so you don't have to um, put the same question multiple times. I am going to get to y'all's question. Um, I have a couple of people that have asked the same question about like seven times, so it's not live. i got to wait for it to catch up to me. Um, so that I can answer y'all's question. Um, I answered that. I already answered that. Brandon, what's going on, sir? Um, that's page three. Page two. Uh, let's see, let's see. Got that, got that, got that, got that. Um. Uh, <laughs> Rob, back to um the stuff, um talking about motivating folks with media ministry. You have to let them know this is ministry. It is. Um, Benny. Hey AJ, I connected the camera to the capture card through HDMI and then to the laptop from the laptop HDMI out port to the HDMI splitter, then splitter to three. TVs and the projectors. TVs are working fine, but projector is showing picture 
for a few minutes and then showing no signal and then again after. It sounds like in that situation, there is power that's being sent over your HDMI, but it seems like it's not enough power to handle all of those. That's why, like the Aura HDMI splitter, I use that all the time because it is a powered splitter. Um, so if you're getting a signal, but then it's going in and out, that sounds like it's a power issue or it could be a resolution issue. I would lean more towards a power issue. Get a powered HDMI splitter if you don't already have one. If you do have a powered HDMI splitter and you're still having that issue, find the least common denominator of the resolution that is supported across all, so all of them because every single one needs to have the exact same resolution support, frame rate support, so that it goes because your computer just sees one monitor. That's it. And it's a first come, first serve. The first one it gets, that's what it sets the resolution to. If your projector doesn't support the same thing, that's why it will go in and out. That's what I would check first. Um, how can I make my live lower thirds on OBS to showing on the sanctuary TVs? Need to know your entire setup first before I can answer that. I mean, the simplest way is just whatever computer is running OBS um, have the full screen projector go out so that it can actually go to the TVs that are inside the sanctuary, but I need to know your full setup first. See, I need to, I have a very bad habit of wanting to help people and it it puts me in a bad situation sometimes. Like, I, I really shouldn't be answering my phone. At this point, anybody knows me. They know what I'm doing, but people will still send messages and stuff like that. And then I just have, like, random people sending me stuff. Like, hey, could you check out this product on Amazon? You buy it, we'll refund it back. No, I don't do that. Um Matthew with the X I have a TV in the lobby and a monitor in the booth. How can I send the program to the TV in the lobby and the program preview? Well, in that same example, I was saying you would have the ATEM mini pro connected directly, have it connected directly to your multi view and then use the USB out, go into something like OBS. And just like we were saying with the lower thirds, have full screen projector send over um, the output on your computer, if you have two display outs, you always could get a USB to HDMI adapter that you can plug in for like $10 in your computer. That would give you an HDMI out that would go to that monitor. That's the easiest way because the ATEM Mini Pro cannot natively do both unless you do USB gives you the program to one and you do something to convert that over to HDMI. OBS is the freest option to do that. And then the HDMI out is your multi view. Pro copy, hello from down under. Under, noticed your mic level is very low, AJ, compared to other channels. Okay. I just don't talk that loud. I got the thing maxed out. So. Uh, Shane and Hannah, hello, hello. Uh, back to Lenny. Thank you so much. I'm usually by myself. The presentation computer is my second focus. OBS comp is my primary. Hey, you are welcome. Um, have I used Pixel LR for making flyers? No, I have not. I have not. Um, like, if I did make any flyers, it would be Photoshop because I use that, or I would use Canva. But no, I have not um, used this before. An AI image generator. Um, no, I haven't. I use Midjourney for a lot of that stuff. So, like, if I go to my Discord that I have set up when I'm using Midjourney, I'll show you the exact image that I actually use when I generated um, for my little entrepreneurs. So 
really love the stuff and like the tags that I use on this ultra realistic, diverse group of preteens as professional business owners with a blurry background standing in front of a desk with their arms folded, aspect ratio 16 by 9. And <laughs> that's the image that I got. And that's exactly what um, this video was. I mean, that, uh, where's that? Right there. So, really, really cool. But no, I have not used that one. Um, might play around with that. Um, Four Square Gospel Church, Birmingham. Um, hello, AJ, bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lamar. Um, have an ATM Mini Pro set up to stream to Facebook. Is there a way to eliminate having to hit go? Yeah, um, it's uh, it's the same way I was saying in the settings. And again, I got to be careful about this because sometimes it's just, I, I just don't understand. Sometimes these permissions get real funky when you try to do certain things and it'll act a certain way and I get blocked when I do certain stuff. So I, I want to be real careful how I do this. Um, hold on, I'm going to try and get to the screen first. So hopefully I'm not showing anything. They always change these terms of service and all this other stuff like that like crazy. Um, so give me one second. I'm trying to actually get to where this would be. All right, so first off, when you're doing this, you have to, this can't be a one-off. You have to actually schedule your live stream for this to work um, to get these settings. So give me one second. I'm just, just trying to set up one real quick so I can get to the the screen that we're talking about. Um, test. All right. So I'm, um, to schedule an event, Facebook makes you, makes you actually set up an event first, and then it gets you to all of the settings. So making sure I'm not showing something I'm not supposed to show. All right, so now that you've got in here, see, this setting right here is what I'm talking about. Go live automatically when it's scheduled. If you s schedule something and you have this checked, once you go live, it will just automatically go. You don't have to, I don't have to come back in here and click go live. That's the first setting. That's in Facebook. Now, let me see if I can find the one here for YouTube. To do the same thing. Uh, give me a half a second. And it might not let me do it because I'm here. All right. I can actually schedule. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to schedule um, next week's. So, so if I come in here, I'm scheduling my live stream for next week. I come in here. This is actually going to be number th three. 163. Um, next. These are the, again, these are the settings I was telling you about. I, I That's what I just had mine set to. I'm um, there. Next. When I'm going to actually go. Next. What's the date that I pick? That's going to be the 5th at 1015. And that's done. So that's going to be for next week. And I want to see, let me take you out here real quick so I don't have, so I can hide my streaming key and all the other stuff. All right, so in here, see this where I have enable auto start? That's checked off. So once I start streaming, it's just going to go. I don't need to come in here and do that. So that's the setting, and that's the other setting in Facebook that you would need to do. Now, for me, I do not set auto stop because sometimes when I had Comcast, my internet would go down. Um, and now that I think about it, I really shouldn't have to do that anymore. But when you enable auto stop, once your stream stops, it kills your stream. That might not be the greatest thing. I want it to start automatically. I don't want it to stop automatically. So um, those are your two settings. I hope that helps you. So Mary, you said you finished the install. Where, where's the video? Where's the viewer stories? That's what I forgot to do. We, we need your stories so we can see what in the world you did. <laughs> stuff like that. If y'all are doing something awesome, folks, you can always email me at info at ajhomes.com. Viewer stories, um, no music in the background, clear audio, two minutes or less. I mean, we don't want it to, it doesn't have to stay at two minutes. Um, we just don't want something that's over like 
seven minutes long or something like that. Um, but you can do that. Also, that's what I forgot to do. Also, send me your pictures for your team so we can shout out your media team, folks. Email me at questions at agentholmes.com. Picture of your team, where you're located, name of your ministry, and just make the subject my media team so we can shout out y'all's teams. I knew I forgot something. Um, it's like, where do you get the rolling mixer? Uh, most of my audio stuff I order from Sweetwater. Um, but I mean, is there any particular rolling mixer that you're referencing? Philip Paul. Hey, AJ, just, just done good Friday service in our church. Praise God. All went quite well. Great. Great. Uh, back to okay, and thanks so much. What micro USB power cord is best to plug into the TV USB for the Black Magic bidirectional? I use the Anchor ones. Um, I actually have this. I'll show you the ones that I ordered for the same converters that I'm going to use. Um, and this is for TCF because we have about 11 microconverters that are going to live behind the TVs. And these are the exact ones that I am using. Um, and I've used these multiple times. Um, and it comes with, it's a pack of five of them. Um, so these work. So I have about, I ordered like three of them um, for this. And I will put a link to these. And it's only, only like $9 for five cables. So really good. I'm hitting the wrong button. I'm trying to switch back, hitting the pedal from here. But I will put a link here. Five-pack USB cables. Um, like I said, folks, you don't have to send the same question multiple times. Um, I'll see, see it in the feed here. Rob, latency is common on the... Um, Starting stuff from what I have seen. Yeah, it's, it's getting better um, the more satellites. And just where my mom is, like I said, I think that's the dish that would enhance it. Um, but again, my mom has been, her stuff has been fine. I used to get a call like every other month when the internet would go out. And I haven't gotten that call in like two months. So I'm happy. Back to Foursquare. Hello, AJ. We tried to connect the ATEM HDMI out to a splitter to display the program to our screens in the church. It didn't work. When connected to just one screen, it works. Any ideas? Um, I think just like we were saying before, which splitter did you use? Personally, like I said, um, even though they have done some um, stuff here on my channel, um, Ori, I used their stuff before they ever started sending me stuff. But let me show you the exact one that I traditionally use. I got so much stuff on here. All right, this is the one that I use the majority of the time here. Um, you could go with a 4K one, but if you if only one is showing, it makes me, but that's coming from your ATEM. That's the first thing I would do. And also, I like this because um, once it's connected, they have a little LED beside every input. So you'll know um, if it's getting the signal back to the TV, um, from the TV. Um, that's the first thing I would do. And it lights up if you're getting um, a signal from the input as well. I would try this as well, too. And again, it's like, $32. Um, at least mine says it gets a 5% off. So no, that's like $36. Um, I would try that. Um, so that's an Ori HDMI splitter. It's a link there. I have two of them under my desk. That's what I use. So um, hope that helps. Uh, back to Elkin. Hey, AJ, I have a layout I would like for you to review. Can I email you my drawn layout? Yes, you can. Email me at questions at ajhomeless.com, and I will check it out. If you get it here while I'm on here, I might actually look at it um, while we're live here. And that was a fast email. No, that was Amazon. Somebody ordered something from the website, one of the Bibles. Okay, sweet. Um, mm. I, was getting I was getting ready to say something about a Bible, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut. 
We are about media ministry stuff. We are not about anything other than media ministry stuff. People that know me, I hopefully you can read between the lines what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, um, if you send me an email, I have my email open. I, I'm sorry. Like I said, you start doing stuff on YouTube, you'll get everybody and their mama wants to start sending you stuff to test out and stuff that don't even make sense. My first answer is always, when somebody sends me something that wants me to um, review their product, I'm like, if you can't give me a practical use for this in media ministry, please lose my email. Um, I know that doesn't sound nice, but that's what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, it is canceled for this Sunday. Uh, Philip Paul wants to know, hey, AJ, how would you set up for special events like Good Friday and others? Do you more than usual? We don't do anything more than usual, so it's the exact same setup. Nothing special. Uh, Daniel? Hello, AJ. The A10 Mini Pro HDMI preview out isn't working. I have done a reset on the switcher, but when I connect it, I get not supported on the monitor. That means that you need to change the settings on the A10. Most likely, your monitor does not support the setting that's in your ATEM. That's what that message is. So it's not that the multi-view is not working. It is working. It's just the monitor that you have connected to it doesn't output. So if you come into your ATEM software, go into general, you need to set this to something. Um, if it's auto mode, turn that off and start cycling through these. Work from the highest down to see which one works. Because whatever this setting is, it's looking for your monitor support 1080p and the frame rate at the end. That If it's showing that message, it means that the monitor, the ATEM that's connected is outputting a signal that your monitor is not compatible with. So, again, it's not that the multi-view is not working. It's just that it's not whatever the ATEM is outputting, your monitor can't support. So you need to go through and cycle through those settings to get one that works for you. Rob, I've had everything on Do Not Disturb this entire month, and I don't know how, still got through. <laughs> so, um, Foursquare Gospel Church, um, please, are there any recommendations for cheap camcorders with SDI out? Um, first, I would say this before I even, well, let me finish reading your question before I say what I say. Our camcorders have HDMI connections, and our cables are all are always bending and breaking. Well, first, if you're doing um, SDI out, that is professional grade, um, so that is not going to be cheap. The easier thing is what we are talking about is switching over to, you can convert something to SDI. So I got a bunch of these. Like I said, this is actually for couple of installs and thankfully I have two of them um, here so what you would need is you would need one of these that will convert HDMI to SDI so you can have a small cable and have this strapped to your tripod you can still use the existing cameras that you got HDMI goes into this then run an SDI out and then if it's back to HDMI there then you just get the opposite where it'll convert it from SDI back to HDMI and then you don't have to worry about the bent cables. You just put these on either ends, and you can still use your existing cables. That's what I would recommend. Um, instead of Because if you're looking for a camera with SDI, you're looking at least, and there, it's not cheap. You're, you're starting at least $1,400 per camera for that. Um, Richard wants to know, can the ATEM Television Studio HD get stereo sound through the two XLRs? Yes, that's how I have it set up at, had it set up at, um, well, not had, have it set up at um, Community Independent Methodist Church, at Antioch. Yes, that's exactly how it's set up, and that's how it's running in. Um, now, you will need to run it into, and I don't know if I can turn it on remotely. I used to. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can log into. 
because when I left Antioch, I gave all the stuff over to them. So I'm able to log in if I'm needed as a backup, but I try not to go in there if there's not an issue. Hold on, I'm trying to log in. I don't remember <coughs> that password. <sighs> let's see, let's see. I don't recall the password off the top of my head. Um, but so I can't remote in and turn it on. Normally I could turn everything on. Um I need to find out what that password is, just in case. Because I normally put it over to their account so that they can manage everything themselves. But like, for example, if we go over here, and I don't think I can trigger it from here. I don't know, maybe somebody's there. I need to find out what that is, that password is as well, too. Um, yeah, it's not on. Hold on. Let me see. I'm looking through my password manager to see if I got the account. I normally would have it. All right, I might actually have to go through their account and get that information. Um, so give me a, I'm going a, I'm to a try and talk through this as much as, I mean, keep going um, with your questions. And I'm on off screen, I'm going to try and log in here to see if I can get into the account as well, too. I'm sorry. It was, I looked at it because I, I, it looked like somebody had changed the password on me. All right. I do have, I, I got the password. Hold on. I'll turn this on here in a half a second if y'all just be patient with me. And on a side note, I don't know if she's watching or not. She'll remain nameless, but happy birthday. Hope you have a good day today. And All right. I am in, so let me remote back over here. Now, again, I'm not – oh, wait a minute. Can I turn the sound system on too? I don't think I can turn the sound system on remotely. But anyway, um, let me turn the ATEM on. And hopefully somebody didn't unplug it. All right, the ATEM is on. Let's give it a second for it to show up here. And this is the ATEM Television Studio HD. And it failed to turn on. Awesome. Just turned everything on. I, I I must say, like, the way I have a lot of this stuff set up, it should not have any issues unless people start touching and moving stuff around. But I have no idea. It looks like a bunch of things have been turned off for some odd reason. I hope I don't get a call <laughs> this Sunday. Because I have, I have, I mean, I remoted in, 
and I'm turning everything on through the CASA app, and it's saying the stuff failed. So I have I have no idea. So I'm probably gonna have to go back there. So sorry, folks. Wasn't able to. What um, Bruce Banner says. Sorry, folks. I wasn't able to do my magic trick today. Um, so we will have to go back here. Ugh. All right. Um, you know who I am. Hey, good morning to you as well. Um, Bobby. Um, we have an X32 compact connected to an S16 stage box. Do we need do we need a direct box connected to the keyboard? Yes, it is recommended to do that. Um, that's what I just added at um, Galilee, and that's traditionally what I would have mine connected. Just have an XLR run through one of those inputs into a direct box and then quarter-inch cable to your um, keyboard. I want to know, how did the 3D printed unicorn turn out? Oh, my daughter loved it. Um, I actually printed out a smaller one, too. And I did print it out, my, my, my logo here in, um, in um, the printer as well, too. But let me show you. I print out the smaller one. So we printed out the much smaller one there. Really nice. I'm going to start getting into some model rocketry. Also printed out a replacement ring for my um, access point. I did the stand, but it doesn't quite fit, align with the holes there. So it's just a little bit off. So this was meant to be a stand to hold it. So I got to play around with that some more. But... It was going good, playing around with some other stuff. I had made a, I had made a plant vase. It was supposed to be a, a birthday gift. I got to figure out how to get this to them. But um, really nice, really cool, the stuff that you can make with this stuff. We'll start making some more stuff, media ministry related as well, too. I'm going to print down, actually, I took, I took it off the, the um, table behind me so I can actually use it. But let me show you. Um, there's a bunch of places that you can go to um, make this stuff. So it, this is Thingiverse. So I want to look at the Atom Mini Extreme. Let's see if they have it. I want to make a stand for mine. All right, so see, they have these stands right here. So that's for the shuttle. Ooh, I definitely need that. So I'm going to download that. And I don't like, I mean, I understand the stuff is free. So it takes a minute um, to make sure that you're not just downloading this and then building it and selling it for some other people. So we're going to download that one. And then we have the Extreme Base. Let's go with this one. And... We'll download those files. We'll download those files. And I'll probably move the um, printer up back on the table. And then I'll start kicking this off once the files get downloaded. I'll show you how the whole process is very straightforward. Uh, back to Duva. <coughs> Duva, excuse me. Acer Nitro 17 gaming laptop. Good also for live streaming. I have the Nitro 5 and it was working. So if it has the same specs, um, yes, it would be good. Kevin from Cape Town, South Africa. Hey, thanks for joining. Can I control the ATEM controller using the iPad? Yes, you can using the Meta app. And there's another one that works. Um, you won't be able to do all the extra functions, but switching and stuff like that, yes, you can. I've used that many a time when I had to play and I need to switch the camera. Um, so that's, yes, that does work. Um, just me being me. Trying to set up a church live stream. We have a camera. We want to do an intro and put up um, scriptures. What else do we need besides the camera? A computer, a capture card, a um, presentation software. Um, or if you're not using presentation software, you need to use a program like OBS, and you can use the First Fruits um, scripture app that will let you put scripture in lower thirds. Those are the things. I have tons of videos that are going over that, so that's a lot to answer um, right now. But 
um, if you look at any of the stuff about um, doing Bible, um, the Bible plug-in, stuff like that, it will go over all of that for you. You, you get what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Fatima. Hey, AJ. Downloaded Prism. Finally got the sound bar to display. However, no sound. And this is with your X32, but you're bringing in audio. I mean, with the X32, if I remember, you need to change it to, I can't remember what channel that was. Seven and eight would be your default house sound. You could just pick that if you were going to pick your audio. Um, preferably, you would probably use the Prism, I mean, Prism, you use the Black Magic one. So I would use mine, for example. And our files have downloaded, so I'll open that up here in a second. So come on there, Prism. And they still haven't gotten it to where it shows everything on the right screen. All right, so in here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so inside of live, and you might not see it because I have to bring this over. You come in here under properties, and then you scroll down, and you will select your audio. So for me, in your scenario, you can do the black magic. I have a different mixer, so you're not going to be able to see me pick it. You'll see the after. I would set to my mixer, so that's the roadcaster. Yours, you could do the black magic, or you would. Um, no, you can't do black magic because you have a no. I'm. We moved y'all to an eight to many stream. Yeah. So, yeah, it would be the Black Magic, or if you have the Behringer connected directly to the computer, it through USB, the Behringer would show here. If it's not, I would pick the Black Magic. Um, that's how you should be able to bring your audio in. Hope that helps. And I thought, Fatima, I replied to that email. If I didn't, my apologies. But that's pretty much what I did. I mean, it could be I've been running – up at 5 a.m. every single day, and I get home around like 8.30, and I pass out. So um, just like the video, I had posted it, and I just never hit save. So that could be possible. Um, back to four square gospel. Well, thanks for the recommendation of the Ori splitter. We will pick one up. Another question on this, please. Will the Ori also send out audio? If you're sending audio into the Ori, yes, it will send audio out. Onto via manual. I have I have an iMac and I need to connect monitors to it. What would you suggest? Well, I need some more information on what type of iMac that you have because some iMacs are limited to how many outputs they can have. Like my M1 um, Mac Mini, I can only connect two monitors to it, so I need a little bit more detail. G. Albert wants to know how sturdy is the 3D printed material? Well, it all depends on the structure that you put inside of it when you make it. Um, so, like, this is the stand. I'm not going to use it. So, so it took all of that to break that. And, again, this is very thin. Um, now, other ones, they're very, very strong. I mean, you put enough pressure on it, it'll break. But um, like this, if I bent this, this is way thicker than that. This will go as well, too, but I'm actually going to use this. So, I mean, it's strong. You can actually get um, harder PLA, stronger ones, and um, light um, to add some extra strength. Sometimes they'll put, um, what not carbon fiber, but they'll put something else in it to make it stronger if need be. Tag Productions, hello, hello. Happy Good Friday to you as well, too. I did try to do that the last week when I was printing it. I did it at the very beginning because some of these prints take a while. So actually, give me one second. Let me move this thing, and I'll actually start the, the ATOM one, and I'll show you the whole process. Hold on one second.
All right, we got it on. Now, this one does not have Wi-Fi, so I have to upload everything to an SD card. All right, so we got that. So now, let me... I'm going to download and extract the HyperDeck um, stands. That's smaller. It's not going to finish in this amount of time. I, I can tell you that. It does take a while to do this. So I've downloaded these files. And we're going to go ahead and open up the Creality print. That's the one that works with this printer. So we're going to open that up. And it just opens up just like a document. Why did you put it on the long screen? Come on. Come on. <laughs> there it goes. All right, so we're going to open that file up over here. And as you can see, this is what it's going to print. Sometimes it'll say if it needs to have structure to support certain stuff. So we'll turn on structure automatically if any is needed. Looks like a couple of pieces in there. All right. And then we'll do automatic supports. And that's a lot. But I wouldn't think it would need that much. But we'll add it anyway because I don't have to want to print this stuff all over again. All right. Then we're going to slice it because it slices it so that it can be sent to the printer. It's not been supported. Yes, it has. I added support. Um, anyway, so if I went through it here, see it shows a time lapse of everything being built. So we'll export it to our drive. Save that. And it's called a G code on how it actually moves the arm and everything. So we did that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that we got that loaded, we're going to go ahead and put this in the drive. And then let me move. What camera can I use to look at that? Let's use this one. I mean, and I, I, I could live stream it. I mean, if y'all really, really wanted me to. Um, so I'll set this camera up and then we'll just um, put it on and let it start. And I have to level it since I just moved it, but I'll do that as the first step. So what camera can I use so y'all can see me? Let's do this one. I don't have my, I was going to say I don't have my wireless. Let me turn this on so you can actually hear me. All right. So y'all should be able to hear. Let's cut over to this camera. All righty. So right here, I'm right here, camera. I'm right here. <laughs> All right. And it's not picking me up. Thank you. All right. So we'll load this in here on the side. And actually, I should cut over to this other camera here. That will actually be better. So we'll load it up on here. And then we set the dial. It goes through a menu. We pick print. We pick the file that we're going to print. I want to calibrate it, and then we start printing. And I'm just pushing the filament all the way in. And we let it go. And now it's just going to start. So it's calibrating. It's calibrating the bed right now. Um, and, you know, we'll see when it comes out from that. And it's going to be, it's going to be a minute before it starts because it's doing the full calibration, making sure it's, everything is level and all this other fun stuff. And then it'll print. And if, like I said, if y'all really, really, really want me to do that, I'll actually, when I do the other print, I'll do a live stream of that and just put some cool music on it or something like that. If you really want to see the before and after. Some of these prints take a while. I don't know how long that one is going to take, but um, I'll cut back here and there once it gets started up. Um, 
TT, yes, that is how it is. Meta. Um, Philip Paul. I need to switch the input for our projector at times. Our projector has only one HDMI in. I'm thinking about using an HDMI matrix switcher or an A1040 Pro. What are your suggestions? The, I mean, it's going to be either one of them would work. Um, it just depends on the budget and what you got. Either one will work in that scenario. <coughs> Back to T T. Do you have more than one video explaining how to set the audio using the ATEM and the PTZ camera? No, I do not, because most of the cameras, they follow the exact same principle where you would turn on the, the audio in, run the audio into that, and then loop it back. So it's pretty much the same process. Is there something in particular um, that you had? Um, Yes, I did answer your question. I was saying um, I have a bunch of other stuff, but I need to know your full setup that you have because your question was like, you just have a camera, but I need to know, are you using a video switcher? Are you using a computer? Is you using a Windows computer, a Mac computer? Do you have a capture card? What's your network? You need a lot more details um, about what you're current. But if you only have a camera, the easiest way, get yourself an A10 Mini Pro. I would prefer an A10 Mini Extreme, but again, I don't know your budget run the audio from your mixer, get whatever cables. It's either going to be an XLR, RCA, or quarter-inch cables. They will go to a 3.5-millimeter cable. That plugs into your ATEM. That will bring audio into that. Have your camera, HDMI, out connected to the ATEM, and you could do it that way. If you don't have that, you could just get a computer that needs to be fast enough to live stream, get yourself a capture card, have your camcorder plugged into that, same type of cables that go to a 3.5 millimeter cable if you don't if your mixer doesn't support USB connect that to your computer use first fruits bible um, plug in for OBS and then you can do scripture so we it's multiple ways so yes um uh, Elkin I'm thinking about let me cut back and forth here just so y'all can see what's going on so see it's leveling um, the bo the bed right now, so we'll come back when it's doing that. Um, I'm thinking about getting the Behringer X18 or the X32. What situations are there to consider for a church media setup? Well, I mean, the X18 is fine, but it's it limits its your growth. Um, the X32 is good because it's going to give you at least um, 32 channels that you can work with. Um, I would never get a mixer if you only have 18. If you have 18 mics, I would not buy a mixer with 18, you have no growth. You're going to end up having to replace that sooner or later. That's mainly my thought. Um, back to Fatima. If you use it for the USB, then yeah, um, you should have the, the X32 audio plug-in running on your computer, and then when you do that, it will give you an option of showing what um, comes up as an option for your audio. So I'm going a, I'm to a see this one church has a um, bad habit of leaving their whole system on. So if they do, I can actually show you an example of this. I really hope they didn't leave the system on. Um, but this would be a good time if they did leave it on. And no, they did not leave it on. So I don't know of any other church I have access to turn that on. Hold on, let me see if Epworth, if they have a service today, maybe they have their system still on. No, it's not. Their stuff is off as well, too, um, which is good. You shouldn't leave your whole audio and everything on. I don't have an example of anybody I can turn their system on to see how that would work. Um, I would just say I do have a video on how to use the audio uh, with the USB. That's the best way to do it because, again, that's when I had everything at my disposal. I don't have that now. So that's um, that should walk you through all those settings. All right. It's
it should be getting ready to start pretty soon. But, yeah. I will probably say that video will walk you through that as well. Back to TT. I'm the only member doing media at my church. Carpet was installed and all of the cables and equipment was disconnected. Can you suggest a video to help me get it back? Uh, um, I would say the beginner's guide on setting up everything um, or setting up the ATEM and stuff like that, that would be the best one to go through all of that. And at the same time, go ahead and use draw.io and make a diagram um, as a refresher for yourself or if somebody else comes behind you to do that as well. Um, Chantavia was saying, I'm trying to set up the monitors, TVs for lyrics and for the live stream. We have an iMac M1, same one I have, for the church, or would you suggest getting something different? Something different, because the M1 is only going to allow you to have the one monitor that you have and then one additional one. That's it. That's the limit. I figured that out when I got this to do tutorials. Um, so that's what stinks about that. All right, and it's starting to make the outline right now. So we'll see how far that goes. Um, I would honestly, to do all of that, I, I, again, I'm not trying to knock uh, knock Max or something like that, but for what you would need, you can probably get a PC that can be able to do that for probably less than what it would cost you to get the Mac equivalent to do the same thing. Um, I do have systems that could handle all of that. You can go to ajtheceo.com and I have tons of them that I build um, that can give you everything that you need to do that. Um, Fatima is actually using one of those. A bunch of them people on here have got systems from me to do all of that. So either one of them, they're actually the same system, the guts, but the presentation changes depending on how many outputs. And I think probably like middle of this year, I'm going to switch over to the new um, um, 86 hundred G and go with the um the new set of AMD stuff, but that would probably be a good option for you there if you were looking or anybody's looking for any custom built PCs specifically for media ministry. Do we need a high spec PC to run a 3D printer software? No. I mean that that software isn't isn't anything. It's just really just showing a file that's not using anything serious. I mean, because the printer is doing everything. Uh, Miriam, have you used the camera app? Yes, a couple of videos I've used. Um, I documented me using that on a couple of them. I didn't do an actual sit down with it, um, review of it, but yes, I have used it. James Day, when the praise team is dancing to copyrighted music, we are muting the streaming output of the ATEM. Is there a way to capture the sound with the dancing without sending it um, to Facebook with the ATEM? Um, we're muting the output on the ATEM. Well, what, what, how are you capturing your audio? How's the audio coming into the ATEM? You have to get something in between that just to record the mix. Um, that would be the only option to make that work. Ivy wants to know, how do you set up a PC to be powered by a POE switch? A computer takes way too much power. A POE switch can't power up an entire computer. None of the ones I've seen have been able to do that. All right, you say you have a camera and an ATEM Mini. What else do you need to live stream, to set up live stream and scriptures? Do you need a program that runs your presentation software that, like, presenter that I've used, that you will output the second display into the ATEM? Um, that's pretty much all you need. And then you would need to have your ATEM hard. Well, you have an ATEM Mini, not an ATEM Mini Pro. If it's the A10 Mini, that's the very first one. That cannot live stream. So you would also need a computer that will run OBS. So if you do that, if you just add another computer that runs OBS, that would bring in everything that the A10 Mini is sending. That will bring your camera and your audio into OBS. Use the First Fruits plug-in for OBS, and that would layer scripture 
over top of that video. That would be the best thing for that. Compare the HDMI matrix and the A10 Mini. The A10 Mini will have a smoother transition. The, A10 ma the HDMI matrix um, pretty much will have like a jerking effect when you change the, um, the inputs. So, I mean, it's subjective personally. Um, I would go with the A10 Mini because it just smoothly transitions like you're seeing me do right here compared to um, the matrix. No, I just wasn't talking loud. I haven't changed the volume on here. I just wasn't talking loud into it. Um, all right, you are welcome. And I think I think that's about it. Um, I got some other stuff. I have some emergency calls that people are calling in. I think somebody broke something. And as much as I don't want to do stuff today, we have to remote in and help out a couple of ministries so that they can get their stuff back up and working um, for their Good Friday service. So um, I think that's about it, and I forgot to update. I have a new um, Patreon supporter and a new um, YouTube member, so they're not included in this, so my apologies. I'll make sure they got added. I knew I forgot about something. But I um, want to give a big shout-out to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Um, if you like what we do here and you want to help support the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash AJ the CEO and get started there, or you can click the join button down below. No matter which way you pick, folks, you are helping us train media ministries all over the world. Um, everybody who is a supporter, I add you in um, twice into all of our giveaways as my way of saying thank you, and then different tiers, they have access to a free consultation with me every month. Um, they just have to book it. Haven't had that many people book it, but it is available um, you get access to all of our um, roundtables that are recorded after the fact, and you can always get there. Um, the whole goal was to actually do more of a private live stream for members and supporters, but I just, I just don't have the time to do that, so my apologies. Um, we're trying to do some more stuff to help out as well, too. Um, but I think that is about it, folks. Normally, I would go a little bit longer, but like I said, we got a lot of stuff, and then I got to go back down to... Holy Temple Church of God in Christ to train them. That was an install that we did like a month and a half ago. So we're going down there to train them. And then we're going to be back. And then I got to go, probably got to work Sunday afternoon and deliver all the stuff at TCF um, because it's going to take me multiple trips to take everything up there. Um, but I think that's about it, folks. So thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. I hope you all have a good day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. You are appreciated. Please let other people in your media ministry know that they are appreciated. They're appreciated for the person, not just the stuff that they do. All right. Um, again, I just really feel um, that we need to let people know that we appreciate them, the person, not just their skill set. The skills are great, but the skills mean nothing if the person wasn't there. And that's why I say I appreciate what y'all are doing because it takes a unique person to do what we're doing and if you weren't doing it we'll be missing something so i appreciate you y'all hope hope y'all have a great day evening afternoon wherever you are and we'll be catching y'all on the next video folks later <laughs>